What's going on there, YouTube? This is NecroStevo, and it's time for our Season 7 Week 11 Team Builder, where the Utah Jasmine are going to rematch the San Jose Sharpedos, coached by Tom. Uh, when the battle happened before, Cooper was coaching, and now it's my turn to go up against Tom. So if you want to skip straight to the battle, there will be an annotation in the description. You can click it and head straight there. Otherwise, we're going to go over the team really briefly here but a little bit more in depth, uh, but still pretty briefly. Now, when these teams faced off earlier in the season, these teams were actually, his team was a lot different from what my team is. He had a lot of changes to his team. Uh, that being said, I do think we have some tools here to where we won't have get forced in any weird situations um, like what happened before. Hopefully, that's the idea. If you need a refresher on his team, it's right there for you. And I put little stars beside the Pokemon I think that he's going to bring. As far as what I'm bringing, we have a defensive Hippowdon. Uh, just because he has a Hitmonlee and an Armanitan. Granted, we saw how poorly Hitmon, uh, Hippowdon took uh, Reckless attack, uh, high jump kick from Hitmonlee before. But I don't think he'll bring it again. So that'll be interesting if he actually brings it again. Um, fortunately, I'm also bringing a defensive Zapdos too, so if he's going to be throwing around high jump kicks, we'll have something to switch in there. But I do think he's going to bring Darmanitan. Of course, Cooper had Darmanitan on the Utah Jasmine when they fought off, when they squared off last time. And so now with his access to that Pokemon, I definitely see him bringing it. Just because of the speed tier against this team and the raw power, I really want to punish him for using that Pokemon, so if he can... If he hits the Paladon, he'll take a ton of recoil damage, Rocky Helm, and he'll take Sandstorm. Uh, so, if he wants to use it, that's fine, but it's going to hurt him for him to be, take that option. Uh, Stealth Rock are actually pretty important in this matchup. Um, for Sash on something like Shiftry or the Azelf, um, just to get chip damage off on Thunderous and even the Zygarde dog form, just in case he tries bringing uh, Yachi Berry or Sash on it to preserve it's um, offensive potential or something like that against my ice type users. I want to be able to break those sashes. Up next, we have an offensive lantern once again, but for the like first time ever, basically. I, I brought it with leftovers once, um, but this time we're going with Shookaberry. Shookaberry allows lantern to live a hit from either Darmanitan or Zygarde or Nidoqueen and strike them back and KO them. Um, in particular, Sugarberry is really nice for the Nidoqueen because I do see a situation where uh, I kind of have to leave it in there and take a hit because if he brings an offensive Nidoqueen, I don't have a switch in for it really. Um, but in order to utilize Lantern most effectively, I went offensive and I'm bringing Hydro Pump this week. That way, if he tries to switch in Porygon 2 or the Guard of War with Trace to trace my Volt Absorb, he'll get Volt Absorb. And then I'll get by a Hydro Pump. Um, if I predict the Porygon 2 coming in, then I will very happily Toxic it on its way in. Um, he won't be able to switch in for free, basically. Like, I don't even have Volt Switch on this set because I expect either Porygon 2 or Gardevoir to come in and get Toxic, or Gardevoir doesn't really like taking two Hydro Pumps either. Um, that speed is actually just there to outspeed an uninvested Gardevoir in case he brings like a weird bulky set. Uh, and then by putting the remainder of my investment into special defense, it allows me to more effectively take an offensive Nidoqueen Earth Power. So that's kind of why that is such a weird spread there. Up next, we're actually going to be utilizing Falzar the Zapdos. Thank you, Cooper, for letting me borrow it. I knew I would not go the whole season without utilizing it, and we do get that opportunity in this battle. We're going to bring Defog, Hidden Power Ice, Roost, and Thunderbolt. Actually, eerily similar to what he brought last time. Um, Zapdos was a little bit strange. It filled in a little bit of a niche for this matchup. Um, cause I really, I got it down to five Pokemon that I knew I was going to bring and then I just couldn't figure out who, who fit b best in that last slot. Um, I did go with the weird max special defense investment with a bold nature, which is not reflected here because Showdown hates me, but this is supposed to be bold. Um, number one. That's the Zapdos I had access to if I wanted to use Defog. I did have my own Defog Zapdos, but it's also bold and it does not have Hidden Power Ice. So Hidden Power Ice allows me to at least do something to um, Thunderous and it'll also do something to the Nidoqueen. Um, the bold nature 
and having almost max HP allows me to live a Zell Shattered Psyche, which is nice, um, alongside the special defense. So that way I can at least get off some damage on it or, you know, if a Sash is broken, hit it or something like that. But Defog is just really nice here because that'll stop him from Hazard stacking against us, which we saw uh, when Cooper went up against him, he had three Pokemon that were weak to Stealth Rocks. And I was trying to limit the amount of Pokemon that I had weak to Stealth Rocks too. So uh, we see I have Zapdos and Cloyster weak to Rocks. Cloyster is going to be Scarf yet again. By going Scarf, Adamant, Max Speed, I Speed Tie with the Azelf, and I really need the power. Um, I've run Cloyster so many times with Max Speed, and just like the, if I just had Max Attack, I would have been able to KO some Pokemon. So we're finally going with just Max Attack. Most of the time I'm clicking Icicle Spear. Explosion might change to Razor Shell, I haven't decided. Um, Rock Blast and Explosion don't do that much to Vaporeon. And Vaporeon might be running Protect Wish. Um, granted, now that I have two electric types, he might not bring the Vaporeon, whereas before, um, Cooper only had one electric type and he had the Darmanitan, so it made a lot more sense to bring Vaporeon. So hopefully he doesn't bring it. That would be nice. Um, granted, if he does, that does make things a little bit easier for uh, Zapdos and Lantern. Like, Vaporeon can't really touch Lantern outside of Toxic, and even then, Lantern can run Heal Bell, so maybe he won't bring it. But Cloyster having the Choice Scarf uh, and an Adamant Nature allows me to possibly 2 it KO Celesteela if it's like specially defensive or something like that. Um, with the Ice Shard, that just allows me to pick off things like Thunderous and the Azelf and the Zygarde and the Shiftry, which I am I am tentatively thinking he might bring Shiftry in that last slot there just because of all my water types. Uh, but yeah, Ice Rock Blast is really just there to have... I don't, I mean, rock, everything that Rock Blast hits, Icicle Spear hits, except for the Darmanitan. Um, so it's not terrible to get locked in on a rock type move against his team, barring the Hitmonlee or the Nidoqueen. But, eh, I don't know. It might be, it might be Razor Shell. I'm not sure. It's always tough for me to decide those things because it's annoying to completely rebreed a whole Pokemon to get one move. Like, for example, Ice Shard, you have to get from Shelter. So after you evolve it with a Water Stone, you can no longer get Ice Shard from a Shelter. So every time I need Ice Shard on a Cloyster, I have to breed an entire new Shelter each time. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is worth it in my opinion because we get some crispy options like this. But yes, uh, the main purpose of Cloyster is just to click Icicle Spear most of the time and pick up those KOs. Uh, Scrafty was a Pokemon that I am tentatively very excited for this week. It has Dragon Dance, High Jump Kick, Knock Off, and Substitute. I can set up a substitute on a number of his Pokemon, including the Celesteela, the Vaporeon, the Porygon 2, and to a lesser extent, the uh, Gardevoir if it's like Choice Scarfed, because I, I anticipate he might bring Choice Scarf again because that did work out really well for him last time. Um, so I have several things I can set up a substitute on. And after a Dragon Dance, I can 2-hit KO or 1-hit KO his whole team. And that's just enough speed investment with an Adamant Nature to outspeed Darmanitan by one point after a Dragon Dance. Uh, granted, if he brings Darmanitan, I totally see it being Scarfed. But if it's Scarfed, it's a lot easier to deal with because then the damage output won't be quite so ridiculous. Uh, I did just go with Shed Skin because of the likelihood of, you know, Vaporeon running Scald, Porygon 2 running... Thunder Wave or Toxic, uh, to a lesser extent, Celesteela running those same types of moves. Because um, I don't see too many opportunities for me to bring it in on his physical attackers. Like, I guess I could bring it in on a Darmanitan or a Zygarde Dog, but I would just have to switch back out immediately. So I'd rather just have it in and have a chance to get rid of any type of weird status. Um, and Muscle Band is just there because, number one, I don't want to take all that extra recoil from Life Orb. Number two, with the Muscle Band boost at plus one, I have a really good chance of two at KOing things like Vaporeon or even Nidoqueen with knockoff. Um, and I didn't, uh, the Life Orb helped a lot depending if he goes more bulky on certain sides. But at that point, I don't want to lose all that HP. And that's why I'm going with High Jump Kick just for the raw power too. If I don't have an opportunity to set up, um, then I can just fire off a strong high jump kick and hit something. And then in the final slot, we have our Reuniclus. We are trying Reuniclus again, because if Cooper did it, it, it's a darn good idea. So we're going to try it again. Slightly different set this time. We're going to go with a Life Orb, 
max special attack modest with enough speed to outspeed Porygon 2 if my Reuniclus gets tricked a Choice Scarf. I don't want my Reuniclus to have a Choice Scarf, but if it does, it will be faster than his Porygon 2. Um, but yeah, if I go Recover, Psychic, Focus, Splash, and Shadow Ball, not only does that give me a great switch into the Celesteela if he brings it, because he can Leap Seed me, it won't do anything. He can Heavy Slam and he can go for Flamethrower, not gonna do very much either. Um, and then I can just hit him back into a KO and with Focus Blast most of the time too. So that gives me a great switch into Celesteela, but it also allows me to really pressure his team, and if I can catch him swapping out, I can get my HP back with Recover. Uh, I do kind of have to eliminate Shift Tree if he brings that before I try using it, but other than that, I can kind of throw around Psychics, which is another reason I see that he might bring Shift Tree because Psychic is annoying for his team to deal with relatively speaking, besides the Azelf and the Celesteela. But uh, yeah, I see this doing at least punching a few holes before it goes down. That's why I just went modest max special attack. Um, actually had the fun task of going back to some of my retired Pokemon, pulling one out of the bank and using some bottle caps on it. So good thing I had that saved. Thank you, Pokemon Bank, for giving me a place to put all those Pokemon that I haven't used in a long time. But yeah, that's the team. I hope you guys enjoy the team builder. Um, Stay tuned for the battle, and hopefully it's a good one. See you in a minute. Alrighty guys, so thank you for taking a moment to watch the team builder. If you didn't, a quick little rundown is going to be the defensive, weird, special defensive Zapdos, defensive Hippaladon, offensive Lamp, turn with Shook Berry, Scarf, Cloyster, Dragon Dance, uh, Scrafty, and Modest Offensive Reuniclus. Now upon seeing Tom's team, he actually brought Pretty much what I expected him to bring, so I managed to nail that down. I was very pleasantly surprised to not see any, um, uh, I guess, tracers on his end, the Gardevoir or the Porygon 2. But at the same token, this also means that something here is scarfed. Uh, the Thunder is the Hitmonlee or the Darmada tank could all very well be scarfed. The team structure kind of made it look like the Celesteela was a little bit more likely to be physically defensive and the Vaporeon might have been more specially defensive. But, um, yeah, this matchup means that Lantern is extremely important. And also means his only switch into Psychic type attacks is Celesteela. So, with that knowledge, I did decide to lead off with Reuniclus. Just because if he led off with anything else besides Darmanitan, I could basically just stay in and fire off a Psychic. Um, and there wasn't much he could do about it. Yeah, he could go out to Celesteela, but then Celesteela takes, um, if it is physically defensive. Then it gets knocked down below half by Focus Blast afterwards. Uh, he does just start off with his Thunderous, fine by me. I decided to stay in there to see if he was Life Orb, and he is not, so I was guessing that the Thunderous was probably Scarfed. And I just go straight for Psychic. Uh, if Vaporeon was physically defensive, or if Vaporeon were physically defensive, that would have done over half. But since it did not, he is especially defensive, as I might have guessed there. So, um... Yeah, interesting information there. So we do see Wish. I need to figure out what his other moves are. So we're just going to stay in here once again and kind of just keep on going for moves. Uh, I could have at some point swapped out, but I was also afraid he'd have Roar. And so by staying in here, I not only get to scout out what his other moves are, but if he goes for Roar, then I get off a free hit as he roars me out. But all we've seen so far are Wish and Protect. You know, normal water move in there, maybe, and either Roar or Heal Bell were in the last slot, or what I was thinking. And he does actually end up going for Roar, and he perfectly roars me out into a Lantern, which was amazing. Um, it didn't really actually matter what he roared me out into, because he got the Wish. Uh, I guess since he roared me out into a Lantern, he can't really stay in on me. Um, he just goes for Protect there. I went for Ice Beam, thinking that the Thunderous or the Nidoqueen might want to swap in on my Electric-type move. Um... And of course, I wouldn't do any damage to the Vaporeon with a water type move anyway. And thinking that he's going to assume that I'm Assault Vest, I'm going to stay in and go for Toxic right now. Because I've brought Assault Vest every single week. And it obviously hasn't really worked out. So <laughs> why why not try swapping up the item here? So the, the Toxic is very, very nice on Vaporeon. Since I figured his last move is probably an attacking move, he doesn't have any way of getting rid of the Toxic on his Vaporeon. Now he does go out into his Nidoqueen here. 
I managed to hit it with an ice beam, but he gets the wish, so it doesn't matter. Um, based on how much that ice beam did, this hydro pump will kill him, but I missed the freaking hydro pump. That sucked. Uh, definitely like he was a more bulky Nidoqueen. He would need to have a hefty special defense investment to live that hydro pump. Uh, and even then, I think I still had a chance. It was like a roll. It was like 75% chance to kill, depending on his spread. So I was really, really annoyed about that because now I went for another Hydro Pump before Porian gets to come in for free. Thunderbolt actually isn't doing that much damage for me being max special attack Thunderbolt here. Um, if I had predicted the Porion coming in, I could have 2-hit KO'd it, possibly. But the Wish Protect shenanigans no longer really work when he has a Toxic on him. So, uh, he is going to lose more HP overall. Yes, he's stalling me out of PP, but I, I took the time to PP max most of my moves that I needed. So, that doesn't really matter to me too much. Uh, once again, I'm in a predicament where I need to predict what he's going to switch into here. Because he can't stay in with Vaporeon. Um, I thought Thunderous was going to come in for sure. But Hitmon Lee comes in, and that sucks. Because I could have gotten so much more damage off on it with a Thunderbolt. Now, Ice Beam actually did way less than I was expecting it to. And it made me wonder if he was like a Salt Vest or something. But no, Hitmon Lee just has decent Spadef, I think. Um... I go out into Zapdos here expecting the high jump kick, and then I completely over predict knowing that he knows that I can do a ton of damage to him with Thunderbolt. I thought Thunderous was coming in for sure, and I just go for Hidden Power Ice and it doesn't do anything. And so that means I lose Zapdos for no reason. I could have defogged there, I could have Thunderbolted and got off a lot of damage. I could have even roosted to force him to go for Stone Edge again, risking the miss. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go back out into my Reuniclus and just go straight for Psychic, expecting him to think he can KO me with a knockoff, which he cannot. Uh, I knew if uh, Celesteela came in, it could not, it would need a 3-hit KO to KO me with uh, Heavy Slam. And then also, Focus Blast is a 2-hit KO from that range. So I miss Focus Blast, and then I take all this extra damage from Heavy Slam, and I'm just like, seriously? That was a waste of time. So now I have to play this annoying game where I try to slowly get my health back up. Uh, and I just try recovering a few times to see if he would go for a coverage move or something else besides Heavy Slam. And I was like, okay, if he's going to keep on Heavy Slamming, I'm going to go out into a pout on and get some Rocky Helmet damage. And Tom is a lord because that is the turn he decides to go for his coverage move, a Giga Drain. And I don't know if he just predicted me to go into Lantern or Hippout on then, or if he just wanted some HP back, because he knew um, that he couldn't lead see me. But that sucked, me going into my Hippout on right at that moment. If I just stayed in and recovered, I would have gotten basically back up to full HP, and been able to fire off another Focus Blast. But now, I don't have anything to show for all the, the, the at least the psychic damage that I put on the um, Sailor Sela before it switched in. And I get up my rocks just because I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be able to defog, so I might as well get my rocks up. And I'm going to go back out into Reuniclus here. And I was at a range of HP where I had a really good chance to live. He would need like a max roll to kill me from there, and he kills me. So, uh, yeah, not great. And he gets a special defense boost. So he had a special defense, specially defensive Vaporeon and a specially defensive Celesteela. Which is actually pretty good prep, because I don't, my physical presence on this team isn't great. Um, with a special defense boost, I cannot 2 hit KO him with my Lantern. So this is a waste of time. Um, yeah, I just, if I had hit the Focus Blast, I would not have been in this predicament. So maybe I should have run a different coverage move that would actually hit on my Reuniclus. I don't know. Uh, it was nice to bring Genova out of retirement. That was one of the Pokemon I had in my retirement folder. Um, I was a little bit annoyed at this point in the battle, and so I decided to try to make a play. Because I've seen Leech Seed, and I've seen Heavy Slam, and I've seen Giga Drain, and I was sure his last move had to be Protect. So I try to bring in Scrafty and go for the sub, as I'm assuming he's going to go for Leech Seed or Heavy Slam. He just goes for Air Slash, which means I cannot set up on him. <sighs> I thought for sure his last move would be Protect. Because I could have set up a, a Dragon Dance, and then maybe had a chance of KOing him from that range. But since he has Air Slash, I just have to hope for an Air Slash miss. Um, and High Jump Kick does do a respectable amount of damage to him for me just being Muscle Banded. But, um, now I'm forced out into my Scarf Cloister, and I'm just going to go for Icicle Spear, because he's going to think that I'm not Scarfed and not want to let me set up, so I at least get to KO from here. I couldn't really go out to Lantern, because he has two Special Defense Boosts, and there's no way he's going to, um, 
stay in on all that, I guess. Uh, he does go out into his Thunderous, and I was like, please don't be Scarfed, please don't be Scarfed, please don't be Scarfed, and he's Scarfed. And that means this is a good game, because Grass Knot kills my Cloyster, Grass Knot kills my Lantern, um, and I have Paladon also is weak to Grass Knot. So, I'm, I mean, Lantern had a chance to live Grass Knot, but not a good enough chance. Uh, he does switch out into Hitmonlee. If I had Thunderbolted here, um, we, it might have been enough to KO after Rocks, quite possibly. But it doesn't matter. I do go out into a Paladon just to get some chip damage here and to give him a chance of missing High Jump Kick if he goes for it. Because uh, if he missed it, he would have KO'd himself. So that gave me my best chance at getting back into the battle because he actually didn't have anything for Lantern um, unless Darmanitan had Earthquake, which is very likely. But I would have at least lowered the differential. So between the, the Hydro Pump miss and the Focus Blast miss here, I just there wasn't much I could do with this match. I definitely think I brought the right things to the battle. Um, that was just a great prediction on his part, the turn he went for Giga Drain with Celesteela because that was basically a turning point in the battle because I was forced out from not having any damage on the Celesteela, as it were. So, thank you very much for the battle, Tom. I did enjoy the, well, I guess it was a rematch for you. I enjoy battling you for the first time. Um, and yeah, the last match we have for the season is our another rematch against the Jai and Tays and Jim Leader Gia. So, we'll have that happen next week. And thank you guys for taking a moment of your time to watch my battle. I'll see you later. Bye.